Hi, I'm Dale, and I'm going to show you how to use Bitwig's Harmonize device as a programmable arpeggiator with some unique characteristics. The main idea of Harmonize is this. You give it some notes, you tell it where to find some harmony, and it makes the notes follow along with the harmony. That's a surprisingly versatile idea. You can use Harmonize for all kinds of interesting musical functions. In this video, I'm going to focus on one. How to use Harmonize as an arpeggiator, like this. I'll start with this simple example and then branch out to some richer ideas that give you just a taste of what Harmonize is capable of. Before we dive in, there are two things you need to know. First, Harmonize has a nasty defect. Second, there's a way to fix it. The defect is this. If you try to play in any key other than C major, C minor, or C whatever, Harmonize plays bad notes, notes that clash with your harmony. If you want to know how to fix the problem, or if you're just curious about how Harmonize works in general, you'll want to watch my earlier video, the Bitwig Harmonize Repair Manual. In that video, I describe in detail how Harmonize works, how it's broken, and how to work around the problem to convince Harmonize to do the right thing in all keys. Now back to the example. Here's the input that I'm sending into Harmonize. It's just notes arranged in a pattern. You could play the pattern just the way it is, without Harmonize. That's a perfectly fine arpeggio, but notice that it's static. It plays the same four notes over and over. I've set up Harmonize to fetch the harmony from another track, which is playing a chord progression in F-sharp major. I'm not going to show you the chords for now, or play them for you, because I want you to hear the chords through their effect on this pattern. Let's enable Harmonize and hear how it applies our simple pattern to arpeggiate the chord progression. Notice that though the input plays the same notes over and over, the output changes from one bar to the next. So maybe you can hear just from that what the chords might be. I'll play it again and try to listen for the chords implied by the notes that Harmonize plays. I'll take a moment here to explain what Harmonize is doing, and then get back to more examples. In this example, Harmonize is working as a programmable arpeggiator. Some arpeggiators are not programmable. Bitwig's arpeggiator device, for example. It offers a suite of predefined patterns, such as up, down, up, then down, and so on. You select one of the patterns, and the arpeggiator applies the pattern to play notes from the chords. With a programmable arpeggiator, you don't select a pattern, you create the pattern. You program it. With Cthulhu, for example, you program the arpeggio by specifying for each step the index of a note in the chord. To play the lowest note in the chord, you specify 1. The second lowest note, you specify 2, and so on. With Harmonize as an arpeggiator, you program the pattern in an unusual way, by writing notes. I wrote some notes, Harmonize interpreted them as a pattern, and applied the pattern to play this arpeggio for our mystery chord progression. Here's an abbreviated explanation of how Harmonize works. Step 1. Harmonize transposes each input note from its position in the scale to the corresponding position in the chord. We've set the incoming note key to F-sharp, which tells Harmonize that the tonic of our scale is F-sharp. This note, A2, is the minor third of the scale, three semitones above the tonic. Harmonize transposes it to the minor third of the chord, three semitones above the root of whatever chord is playing in the harmony track at that time. This note, C3, is the diminished fifth of the scale, six semitones above the tonic. Harmonize transposes it to the diminished fifth of the chord, six semitones above the root. Step two, 
After Harmonize transposes the note, it checks to see if it clashes with any notes in the harmony. If it doesn't clash, Harmonize plays the note. If it does clash, Harmonize picks an adjacent note that matches the chord and plays that instead. The way Harmonize identifies and resolves clashes leads to one of its unusual features as an arpeggiator. It might end up playing a note that isn't in the chord. Once it transposes the note, if that note doesn't clash, Harmonize is happy to play it even if it's not in the chord. So maybe it's technically not an arpeggiator, or maybe it's an embellishing arpeggiator. That's the short explanation of how Harmonize works. For full details, watch my Bitwig Harmonize Repair Manual video. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, here at long last, is the chord progression we've been arpeggiating. I'm going to use this to point out another unusual feature of Harmonize as an arpeggiator. First, I'll play the arpeggio again. What happens if we move the harmony up a few octaves? What happens? Nothing happens. Harmonize played the same notes as before. With Harmonize, the octaves of the harmony notes do not matter. Harmonize always plays each output note in the same octave as the input note. And that means if I move my pattern from one octave to another, I can play any note from the chord in any octave I like. So far we've been playing one note at a time. Now let's try something polyphonic. Here's a pattern that started off as semi-random-ish chords and then I adjusted the individual notes until I liked what I heard. When you program a pattern for Harmonize, you write notes. And that means you have at your disposal the full capabilities of Bitwig's note editor. Let's take advantage of that by creating something more elaborate. I'll start by creating a rhythmic pattern on a single note, F-sharp 1, the tonic of the scale we're playing in. And here's something interesting. If you play the tonic of the scale, Harmonize transposes it to the lowest note in the chord, but then plays it in the same octave as this note. Listen. We've just discovered Bitwig's super secret bassline extractor. All right, let's copy this pattern up an octave and then onto some other notes, but offsetting the pattern by a few sixteenth notes and a few notes fell off the end of the loop. Let's move those to the front. Let's take these uh, pairs of notes and move one note from each pair onto a note of its own. And just for good measure, we'll bump a couple of these E's up to F. And let's take a couple of the F sharps that are on even 16th notes and move them down to C sharp, the fifth of the scale. And now let's find out what we've done. Well, that's pretty busy. So... Let's make it busier. I'll copy some of the notes from the middle of the pattern up to the next octave to add a bit of melody to the end of the loop. And how busy are we now? Let's use Bitwig's operators to add some variation, and also to get this mess under control. I'll start by adding some randomness to the velocity. And then I'll adjust these notes in the middle of the pattern to make them less likely. 
And while we're at it, let's make each note play only if the one before it didn't. Except for the first occurrence of each note in the clip, which will be governed just by the probability. All right, now let's hear this slightly tamer version. I think I want the melody to grow over time, so I'll make this lower part play only every two loops. The upper part play every four. Well, that's not terrible, but we've left out one of the operators, the repeats. Let's see if we can do something interesting with that. And we'll play it only on the third loop when the melody isn't playing. Of course, you can also do fun stuff with expressions. Um, I've only messed with the velocity, but experiment with pressure, timbre, gain, and pan, too. You can also use operators on the harmony. Harmonize ignores expressions on the harmony, but it does apply operators. When harmonize receives a note at its input, step one is to transpose the note based on the harmony. For that step, harmonize cares only about the lowest note in the harmony. A note comes in, and Harmonize identifies the lowest note in the harmony and transposes the input note by that amount. If you take a note that's higher up in the harmony and move it or duplicate it so that it's the lowest note, Harmonize transposes based on that note. So if we use operators to vary which note is the lowest, Harmonize will transpose differently on every loop through the harmony. When you use Harmonize as an arpeggiator, the pattern is just notes. So anything that can generate notes can generate an arpeggio pattern. For example, you can use Bitwig's new step sequencer device, Stepwise, to generate the pattern. Here I'm using Stepwise to generate a pattern across a bit more than two octaves. The lower octave plays this. And the higher notes. And together they sound like this. If I'm ever called on to write the score for a movie about a flea circus, I'm ready. And I'm willing to bet that you can use Stepwise and Harmonize to write even better music than that. I'll leave you with a final tip. If you write your harmony track entirely with seventh chords, Harmonize can always stay in key. If you play only triads, or if your harmony otherwise leaves large gaps between the pitch classes of the notes, 
Harmonize may not have enough information to avoid clashing with notes elsewhere in your song. Let me turn that around. If Harmonize plays notes that clash with your song, that means it doesn't have enough guidance about the harmony. So add another note or two to your harmony track. And there you have it, Harmonize as Bitwig's built-in programmable arpeggiator with a unique musical personality. <laughs>